All right. Well, I think it is three o'clock now. So I am going to bring in our guests and welcome everybody to the second episode of Talking Trees, right on cue. Hey, Josh. Hey, how are you, Kay? I am great. How are you today? I'm good. Good. Well, we've got people rolling in. So thank you so much for joining us today. Today is Wednesday. And that means our new series for Davy Tree, Talking Trees Live, we have to do the jazz hands <laughs> live, um, is back. And this new video series is picking some of our arborists who are out in the field every day, talking to customers like you guys. And we're taking some of your top questions and we're asking them to dive deep into those questions and hopefully this helps you. Another thing we wanna do is get your questions here live. So you've got Josh Fritz here and he's here today just simply to answer questions for you guys. So our topic of the day is why leaves change color. So it's a really fun topic. We're right at the cusp of fall, which is hard to believe, Josh, I know. No, no. Oh my gosh, but um, he'll be talking about why, you know, what's the science behind that? I should get my first grader in so she can get a little science, homeschooling <laughs> science lesson in. Um, there you but go. Once the science behind that and why, um, if there's a problem, what do we do about it? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today with Josh. Yes. So we've got people tuning in and saying hi. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Let us know where you are, um, you know, tuning in from. Josh told me he's in a state park. Where are you? Um, I'm in Concord, Massachusetts, at, uh, at Minuteman National Park. So that's where the, the shot heard around the world is, is this is where I'm at. That's awesome. We got a little piece of history too. Um, yep. I always say I, I cannot do math because I'm a, a marketing person, but I can do history. I love history. So that's awesome. So Josh is going to show us some actual examples of some fall color. And in New England, I'd say, oh, we just lost him for a second. He'll be back. Um, in New England, now is about the time when trees you know, maybe I'm going to, I got, I want to ask Josh, but when trees are starting to turn here in Pennsylvania, where I'm based, it's a little early for the trees to start to turn, but I was walking around here um, in my backyard today with a guest that we had on two weeks ago, Jason Gaskill, who is my local Davy Arborist. And we were looking at some of our trees and I have a lot of fall color. I have some anthrax note, anthracnose. I have some, um, just some general heat, damage, some leaf scorch. Jason told me about all of these things that are damages um, that will that will start early color. He's coming back now. Sorry Ooh. about that. <laughs> That's okay. Listen, a slip of the finger can happen anytime. So sure. People aren't here to hear from me though. So, all right, right. that's what we're gonna talk about today. So if you have any questions about why leaves change color, or I'm sure we could throw Josh a few curveballs if you have other landscape or tree care <laughs> questions as well. Um, no best. pressure. So welcome everybody, it's so great to see. We've got Florida, no change in leaf color in Naples. You've got other great things happening in Naples, but that's one of my favorite things about New England is the fall. It is definitely one of my favorite seasons you know, you've got that beautiful, gorgeous color. The The weather is changing and it's, you get that. I'm not a big pumpkin spice latte fan. Are you? <laughs> no. Yeah, no. That, grab, shouldn't be in, that should not be in Dunkin' Donuts. No, especially not now. But grab a cup of tea or whatever you like and you enjoy fall. But this, um, so let me introduce Josh. Josh Fritz is a certified arborist, yes. uh, arborist consultant at Hartney Graymont, a Davy company. So you've been with the company for over 22 years. Yeah, yeah. Hard to believe it. <laughs> so as you know, what, what that says is your arborist has a lot of experience and a lot of the Davy, Davy arborists, when I'm looking through your bios, you've you guys have decades of experience and, you know, you can study this stuff, of course, um, but that's what you really get from Davey and from Hartney is that experience in the field. So I'm really excited to chat with you today. So we talked about that. It's hard to believe it's September um, right. and that the breezes are coming through, although it's pretty hot here in Pennsylvania. It, How is the weather there? Uh, it's 85. So yeah, it's a little warm. It's a little warm. And lately we've been having pretty, pretty warm um, falls here yeah. in, in the mid-Atlantic. Have you guys as well? Oh, it's been a hot summer. 
Oh no, we keep losing Josh. What is going on? Um, but, and I know all of you Coloradoans out there, we are thinking of you. I know you've had a major temperature swing from, I don't know, what was it over the weekend? A hundred degrees and it's dropped down to 30. So we're all thinking about you. Um, Davey has a great team out there of arborists who are assisting with any tree care that you need or any tree any tree care questions. And um, Courtney, maybe we could post how to find your local arborist in the comments. That way, if you, for those of you who are not lucky enough to be based in Josh's area. So Josh is back. Hey. Hey. Sorry. All right. Let's get into the meat of it before you hang up sure. on me again. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's going on. I know Weird. it's it's all right. It happens. That's what live TV is all about. That's what people tune in to see is the mistakes, right? You guys like to see reality. Um, yeah. All right. So we already have our first question. And Kathy, thank you so much for asking that. Um, sure. Kathy's asking, why do some trees start turning color earlier than others? Oh, perfect question. Perfect question. Sometimes, uh, especially when they turn early, uh, it's usually an indicator that the trees uh, stress. So I can give you a perfect example of that right now with a dogwood. So I'll just put my swing, my screen. There you go. So this mm. is a, your, your typical um, uh, flowering dogwood. Uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, the leaves are starting to turn red. Um, the reason why is this, uh, basically this tree has been suffering with uh, anthracnose this summer. Mm. It's a leaf disease fungus. Um, what happens is, uh, when the leaves become compromised by a fungus, that leaf cannot be, uh, can't produce uh, uh, food for the tree. Mm. So what the tree will do, it was actually shed those leaves off uh, the tree. So that's when you start to see the color, the chlorophylls just uh, basically uh, uh, drying up into the leaf, trying to absorb as much uh, sugar as it can out of that leaf, and then it'll, it'll shed it. So it can't produce any more food. So that's the reason why you see it um, basically turning early. Is uh, That's one of the uh, issues with that. Another time is, uh, you know, uh, we've been in a serious uh, drought up here in uh, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm seeing a lot of, especially the street trees, they're starting to turn a little early. And that's an indicator. It's just... Um, We keep losing Josh. So, all right. Well, he's going to get to us about some issues with the why leaves keep changing color early. But, and we'll get to your question, Kim. I thank you for your question and for you, Kelly. Um, Kelly's question is how do quick temperature changes affect the colors? And so let's take Josh back. Um, why tree, tree leaves change color when he comes back in the first place? Why do leaves change color? We want to know you know, what is the science behind that? You know, is it is it temperature like Kelly is suggesting or is it a problem or is it just the tree going dormant and going to sleep? What actually does sig signal that tree to change color? So that's going to be really my first question for Josh when he comes back. Um, and Kim, we'll get to your question too. We will definitely address um, Josh's five favorite trees for brilliant fall color. Because one of the other things that you have to realize is that Trees do, some trees will change color a little bit earlier than others. Plus you've got reds, you've got yellows. There are so many gorgeous colors that it's not all about that, you know, one fall color. I'm sorry. This is just, I'm, it's no problem. It, it keeps bouncing me out. So yeah, I'm it's all right. It's no problem. Um, listen, I can talk for hours. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take it back to the top and talk about sure. why leaves change color in the first place. Oh, okay. So... Why do they change? So basically, uh, trees, they have uh, pigments in their leaves. They have uh, four different types of uh, pigments. Um, the prim primary uh, pigment that we see during the summer, that's chlorophyll. So that basically covers up a bunch of the other pigments in, uh, in the leaf. They're always there. Oh. But, but the, uh, the chlorophyll just basically is more dominant in the leaf itself during the summer so it can produce chlorophyll. Now, you also have trees um, that are like red during the summer, or even uh, you have a copper beech, mm -hmm. for instance. Um, what happens with those leaves, um, for instance, that pigment um, actually disguises the chlorophyll. So the chlorophyll's in there, but because it absorbs 
the green light coming off the sun, you can't see it. So it's always there. So that's a uh, reason why different trees have, you know, red and orange and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. When the, another thing is, uh, is when the chlorophyll actually um, dries up in the fall, that's when you really reveal the true colors of the tree. Uh, wow. In the leaves. Yeah, yeah. That's that basically so what cool. goes on. Yeah. That's neat. And so Kelly had a question she was writing in is that does cool weather then change? I guess it's not the cool weather, but what you're saying is the, it's the absence of the sun. The sun is not as strong. So there's not as much changing of the pigment. So the cool weather doesn't really, well, I guess it, they're tied it together. Does. Absence it, of the sun. Yeah. Man, that poor guy, he's going to feel so bad, but we're with him. We're not going anywhere. Don't go anywhere because you're going to make Josh feel bad if you go somewhere when he has hung up on us once again. Did, did I say something? Did you guys say something? Who was the last person to chat? Um, you know what? This is what happens when you're dealing with technology. And I'll tell you what, we've got a lot more people on Zooms now because of schooling. And um, we're just going to roll with it, Josh. It's no big deal. You didn't lose a single person. They're all still here. All right. All right. So we talked about why leaves change color. Um, yep. And then one of the next questions was, you were already talking about the issues. So if trees yep. are, you were going into drought stress before we lost you. Say you were, yeah. that Boston was having a really big issue. Sandy yep. was asking about um, what can you do to combat drought, com combat drought stress? Right, right. So uh, obviously you want to try to water the tree as much as you can as uh, the town allows you some towns are uh they have uh, uh water restrictions so you do what the town says you can do but you typically you want to water the tree once a week if you were uh if it's not raining and stuff like that so that's uh that's one of the steps um another thing you can do is uh fertilize the tree believe it or not um the way we do it at davy uh we do an injection deep root fertilization so we actually in uh probing into the soil with uh, nutrients and water. So we're doing a two for one for the tree. We're actually watering the tree and feeding it at the same time. Hmm. So that actually, uh, it's really uh, crucial for that um, because during the summer with, like I said, with the leaves, you know, that are, uh, that have the fungus issues, mm -hmm. they're not producing as much food as they should. And also when you're in a drought situation, the tree kind of says, I'm game over. I'm giving it up on this year. I'm going to go for next year. So it's a, ideally you want to feed that tree, you know, late, late uh, summer, early fall. And it actually takes all that stored energy coming into the root system from the fertilizer and it gets a, a good start for next year. Yeah. Mm, I love it. Those are great tips. Now, um, you can do your own watering. I know Davey has this trick about a tin can. Do you know that trick? I've read about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you, you share just... people just so they understand? Because I think a lot of people, my husband included, will kind of yeah. spray the leaves and then this is more a perennial, it's not our trees, and then call it a day. I'm like, honey, can... I'm water. You know, it's like, so yeah. can you help people understand like what a good soak is for a tree? Yeah, you really want to uh, focus on the root system, you don't really want to hit the leaves. I mean, it helps. It actually makes the tree a little bit cooler, but you really want to focus on the leaves. I mean, the roots, I'm sorry. Uh, so basically what you do, the co uh, the coffee can, or the uh, I, I did the tuna can uh, thing at college. So we just get out the, the sprinkler and you put a couple of uh, tuna cans around the, the area where the basically the sprinkler is hitting. And you want to basically, allow that can to get about an inch of water in there. And that's basically what the tree needs per week. I so yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So that's it's a, a good, great tip. Yeah, yeah. So you just want to keep it going until that uh, tuna can or the coffee can gets about an inch. And then and, you can shut it off. And I think it's way more than you think it is. I think we don't realize how big that root zone is of the tree. Um, perfect timing. I'll just continue talking. We don't realize how big of that, that root zone is of the tree. And um, that's just a really good watering tip. So we appreciate that, Josh. Maybe there's a correlation here. Every time I start talking is when we lose Josh. So maybe I'll just be quiet for the next uh, little bit. I think, Josh, I found a correlation to whenever I start talking, we lose you. So I'm just going to let you keep talking. 
<laughs> oh, really? Okay, there you go. Um, we've got another question from Sage Ann. So does a hotter summer with more sun mean a more vibrant fall? Are those two things related? Uh, not really. No, no. You want, um, ideally, you want a warm day and cool nights to really uh, enhance the, the color. And you also need water. That's another thing. You really need the water. Because right now, uh, the leaves I'm starting to see, they're really dull. It's just, uh, they're, like I said, they're just trying to shut down mm. uh, because it's, it, it is dry. So, yeah, you really need that water in there. So. That's, a, that's the other key. Yep. Okay, that's a great tip because when you talk about this drought that not only has, I mean, New England in a drought, that's unusual. We've heard about California's drought, which is terrible. Texas, you yeah. know, the Southeast being in a drought, but to hear about the New England area, or is it abnormal? I mean, I feel like it is, but I don't want to. Uh, yeah, every now no. and then we, we yeah. have a drought, but not nearly as, as bad as like California. That's just yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. So there are lots of things that you can do. And like Josh said, watering your trees and then fertilizing your trees yep. is another great step that you can call your local arborist. I know we've posted in the comments here how to get in touch with your local arborist um, in yep. your region or Josh, if you're in you know the New England, Concord, Boston area. Yeah. Yeah. You can call. We have two offices. I'm in Concord and we have another office down in Needham, um, Mass, a little further south in the uh, Metro West area of Boston, the Cape, Maine. So we're got we're you covered. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, let's get into, I think it was Kim's question about some of the best plant. I mean, you know, we all want that fall color. One of the things that I try to do in my garden is plant for four seasons. You know, I'm here in Pennsylvania. Yeah. I want those, um, you know, berries in the winter, but what are some of your favorite fall trees or favorite trees for fall color? Oh, we're just about to get to him. Um, all right. So we are going to ask him that question when he comes back. He's been really quick coming back. So, Kim, we'll get to your question. In the meantime, um, please let us know if you guys have any other questions. Josh is, like, on it with answering them. So let us know if you have any other questions about fall tree care or why leaves change color in the fall. So my favorite leaf color in the fall is my Japanese maple out front. It is just absolutely beautiful in the fall. All right, you're back. Yeah, what are some of your favorite fall uh, trees? I'm a big fan of uh, sugar maples. That's uh, the, the, the classic tree that I really love. Red maples are uh, awesome as well. Um, one tree that uh, some people really don't think about is uh, tupelo or black gum. Uh, they got a really bright, bright red fall color, and they're unbelievable. Mm. Um, I also, uh, uh, if you want a showcase tree, it's called the Four Season Tree. It's uh, Japanese Stewardia. Uh, it's got unbelievable fall colors, red and orange. Uh, the bark itself exfoliates, so you have like a cinnamon, mm. orangey bark color. Um, in the summer, you get this camellia-shaped flower all through july so and as far as maintenance you really ha don't have to do a lot as far as pruning and whatnot it's so, good good uh, focal tree right in front of your house so i'm hesitant to talk i don't want to kick you out now i don't know what the trick is but yes i love all of those ch tips we were at the poly hill arboretum i went to martha's vineyard this summer and oh, nice. the poly hill arboretum has this enormous collection of stewardias and yeah. my husband's now it's his new it used to be a rising sun red bud was my husband's favorite tree but now it is the stewardia she, there must have been five different variety or you know different family members whatever you however you say that of that tree and you, like when josh says that the bark is exfoliates it is the coolest camouflagey looking bark and i didn't even know that they have great fall color nor yeah. about the fall the flower in the spring so i'm now going to be a stewardia collector that is such a great tip yeah i plant a lot of them uh the uh, tip with those trees is they don't want um afternoon sun so you want to kind of shade it in the uh, afternoon so it all right and lori is saying japanese what s-t-e is it w-a-r-t-i-a stewardia i can't remember courtney would you google that for me um and i can't remember exactly what the spelling is but um how tall does a four season tree grow so how tall josh does the four season tree grow uh, at the most, maybe 15, 20 feet. Yeah. They so. did seem like they were in the smaller family and they're long lived. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen, uh, at the Arnold Arboretum, 
they've been there for over a hundred years. So wow. yeah. Yep. We've got a lot of other Black Tupelo fans. And, oh, yeah, there's Cindy saying Stewardia, S-T-E-W-A-R-D-I-A. -I, -A. I couldn't remember if it was a W in there. Yep, I always say Stuart I-A. That's how I can remember. <laughs> got it. Um, all right, so I love the concept, as Josh just brought up, of planting that four-season tree. So thinking about your trees as how they can offer you, you know, that spring flower, the beautiful shade in the in the summer, and then that gorgeous fall color. And then I think that, you know, winter interest, of course, we've got our evergreen trees, but that winter interest is, of course, beautiful as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A blank of the snow with that Stewardia mm. is unbelievable. Oh, my gosh. We're yeah. going to – Stewardia, Google – um, searches are going to be on the rise right now. Um, <laughs> I saw a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked a lot about how um, healthy trees that are well watered in a nice, you know, hot summer with cool nights um, produce the best fall color. So you showed us that dogwood that has some anthracnose. Yep. Yep. Um, and so what are some other common problems that might stop that leaf color from emerging or looking so bold and bright? Yeah, yeah. I mean... Obviously, you know, if you have a hurricane come through and it blows the leaves off. But, um, yeah, mainly it's the, you know, the lack of water, the diseases. Those are, um, even insect problems are the ones that just kind of really hamper the fall color. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. And so obviously having, I'll say this for Josh, but having a certified arborist come out to your house to help you understand what some of those problems are. But I know I'm not a kind of person who is able to identify insect problems. I was telling you earlier, my arborist, Jason Gaskill was out today and he noticed some leaf miner, I think he said, in my boxwoods. And I would never have spotted that. So having your certified arborist be able to come out is a good tip. But the first tip is, are your leaves brown? Are they not showing that fall color like they should be? Maybe it's a sign of drought, but maybe it's a sign of a bigger issue. So yeah. have your certified arborist come out and check for you. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. 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 You don't, you, you don't, um, us just taking out, taking a look, you know, um, giving you option of what to do to maintain your trees. It's, uh, it's on, yeah, it's the best thing to do because, uh, we can, uh, nip things in the bud, let's put it that way before things get really bad. Yes. Does pruning affect the color of trees? Like, could you, I mean, is new growth on some trees more bright and bold and not in the fall, it wouldn't be right. Not really. Um, but that does that definitely helps. I know, um, the more vibrant wood, the uh, younger trees, they're more uh, vibrant fall color. So yeah, pruning trees to get out the old wood and just uh, cutting back to the real vibrant wood, that definitely helps. Okay, and what are some Makes other- safe. Well, that's true because yeah, I mean, that's one of the big, big problems, you know, as we come into more of a storm season is pruning is a great thing to do now. Is this a, a good time to prune your trees? Yeah, absolutely. Um, right now, that's what I'm doing. I'm just uh, evaluating uh, all my clients' trees. Um, what basically, I'm trying to do is prepare these trees from hurricanes, um, you know, ice uh, storms, uh, blizzards. Uh, those uh, just making sure the tree is uh, safe around people's homes and around the yard. Um, I'm taking out any uh, big dead wood in the tree. That could uh, just be, you know, the tree will shed that limb and mm -hmm. it could hit somebody. So, yeah, those are the things we're tr doing proactively to try to make uh, those trees safe for everybody. And now, now and as we get into winter, that's called, is that called dormant pruning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And another reason why we do it in the... Uh, well, I had a tip about dormant pruning. Another reason why I like dormant pruning is because you can see. So if you, you the leaves are off of the tree, you can look up into the tree and you can see, oh, that branch looks like it's not so healthy. Josh, I was just sharing one of my tips about dormant pruning is that you can see the tree better because the leaves yeah. aren't on it. But yeah. you were going to say. Not only that, that's um, it's a better time to prune because you're not dealing with uh, fungus problems. Because everything's dormant, you're not spreading disease to, to another healthy tree. For instance, like uh, elms. Uh, if you have an elm that's infected with uh, Dutch elm disease, it can actually spread to another healthy elm. Wow. Not only that, um, when you prune an uh, elm during the growing season, what ended up happening is um, you're actually uh, it, it basically uh, 
alerting insects to come to the tree. And they'll actually, uh, that's when they spread the tree, I mean, to the fungus as well, to the tree, because they carry the disease on their backs. They go from a dead tree to a live tree. So, yeah. Wow, yeah. lots of great reasons to consider some dormant pruning. And, yep. you know, learning from your arborists about when the right time to fertilize, when the right time to prune. Is there some problem with your tree? Because all we want right now is to be able to sip our tea, not our pumpkin spice latte, look out of our windows and look at that gorgeous fall color. And if you don't yeah. see that on a tree that usually looks pretty, then that probably is an indication that there's some issue with your tree. It might be as simple as it was a, a dry summer, but it yep. might be a little more serious than that. So call your arborist to have them come out and check it. Yeah, I have no problem coming out and take a look. I love talking shop. So awesome. So, are there any other tips that you can offer for to help us preserve our trees? We've talked about fertilizing, um, watering, and pruning. Anything else to keep that fall color and make them looking healthy? Yeah, yeah. Mulching trees is a really good thing because you're actually maintaining the uh, moisture in the soil and also the temperatures in the soil as well. So that's another uh, thing we could do. Um, if you see. Well, Kim, I just read your question. I don't know if I missed anybody's question. Kim, I have is the last one. If you guys, if I missed any of your questions, please let me know. Um, but I've got your question, Kim, the best way to make an appointment with an arborist. So, all right, keep, sorry, Josh, you're back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else was I saying? Oh yeah. Um, mulching, it conserves mulching, moisture. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, another things we can do, uh, if you see the soil around the tree, pretty compacted, almost like, um, you know, it's really like brick or concrete. We can actually do what's called air spading or just a uh, vertical mulching to actually loosen up the soil, put some nice compost in there to make the soil a little bit better medium for the roots to actually grow and allow air, um, pores into the soil as well so that the roots can breathe so that's awesome. another thing we do yep awesome tip sandy is saying do you have tips for not over mulching because one of my biggest pet peeves in the world is volcano mulching i want to get out and scream at no offense to landscapers who don't yeah. know what they're doing but i want to be like pull that mulch back from the tree yeah yeah you only want two inches uh, if you ever go into the soil i mean the forest you uh, kind of take the uh leaf uh, duff underneath the tree it's at the most two, maybe three inches. So that's all you need. The tree doesn't need that much. And the uh, reason why is uh, you'll actually uh, encourage uh, roots uh, wrap it itself around the trunk of the tree and mm. girdle it. And not only that, you're, you're not allowing air and water to get into those root systems. So Yeah, yeah and you really don't want important. the mulch touching the trunk because that can cause more fungus and Fungus rot. problems, yep. Yeah, yep. so... Yep. Do a good job with your mulch and become a no volcano mulch advocate like me. <laughs> um, oh my gosh, you have given us so much tips, so many, many, many tips. And I, your patience has, everyone here is commenting what a trooper you are. So whatever technical yeah. difficulties we were having today, the Facebook gods were not shining on us, but I think this <laughs> is a great conversation. I'm so sorry about it, but I hope you got something out. Oh my gosh. It, it was a fantastic. He has to come back to hear more praise. You guys give, give me some more praise for Josh. Um, and then Sage Ann, let me get to, I'll ask him your question as well about leaving a diameter in a tree. Do you mean um, the, the mulch ring around the tree or what diameter you mean from the trunk? I think you must mean from the trunk, how far to, to pull it out from the trunk. So I will ask him that question. But in the meantime, I want to thank you guys all for tuning in. Davey is, as you guys are saying in the comments here, everyone's saying how much they love Davey and appreciate the work that Davey has done at their property. So thank you guys for tuning in. All right, we have another question. I know you're okay. like, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging up on you already. I'm ready to go. I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> how it. far away from the trunk should people put the mulch? Sage is asking like four um, to six inches or just how far away? No, no, you can, you can put it right up to the, the trunk you just only want it to have like a maybe a half inch of an inch okay so that you know so that it, it can dry out so okay as you get further away from the trunk you can get up to the two inches okay got it so the two inches is the thickness yep and away just like an inch away from just don't have it touching the yeah, trunk and you can yeah, even make exactly. like sometimes we'll make a ring around so the water can sit inside that little mulch yeah ring. yeah we do that with our newer trees yep yes 
Awesome. All right. Let's see. So many comments. Great job, Josh. Thanks for all the tips. Thanks for your time. Oh, thank you, Katie. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> most people are thanking you, but all right. Any more questions? Did I miss any more questions? Everyone's saying you how awesome you are. So Josh, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing your tips on why leaves change color and what to do if you see either a tree changing color too early or like Josh showed that um, dogwood. You said there was an elm. Is there an elm nearby you can show us to, or did yeah, you walk away me, from it? No, I'm, I'm not too far away from it. Let me go All right. Yeah. Um, because if you see that browning of the leaf, like he showed on the dogwood, or spots, or something that indicates that there's not going to be a pretty red color, you've got a problem with your tree, and you want to fix that. Yeah, this elm that I'm going to be looking at, it's, it's, it's a very young, so it's uh, pretty vibrant, but... Like I said, we had a really hot, humid summer, so we're starting to see some uh, little leaf that, uh, spot on it. So not too, too bad, but still you want to at least take a look at it. So let me flip it around. There we go. So if you look at the leaf right there. Oh, oh, I want to know, is that leaf color normal this early in September? Because he's so much... Um, further north than me here in Pennsylvania, I don't have really any fall color happening yet on my trees. You guys were from all over, so I don't know if anyone else is having any fall color on their trees yet, but I know you guys are all big fans of fall because I saw all your little leaf emojis earlier. All right, you're back. So was that yellowing nat normal color for the elm at this time? Uh, yeah, actually that's a fall color. So okay. once, the, once the chlorophyll uh, starts to recede that's what you're going to see so gotcha. the, yeah yeah and what triggered that was just uh the leaf spot on the leaf it, it, hopefully you saw that and i can yeah. flip it over if you wanted the end so yeah we saw yeah that'd be great you flip yep. it over one more time but this has been yeah. so awesome thank you so much for putting up with oh yeah look at that that is a yeah. that is a problem right there and you want yeah. your that's your tree crawling out for help exactly <laughs> So, all right. Well, Josh, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. Everyone has really enjoyed it. Um, enjoy your fall. Grab yeah, a nice to. regular coffee. And although it's 85 degrees, so an iced coffee. <laughs> yeah, we like our iced coffee up here. Yes, That's you do. Um, yeah, yeah. And guys, give... Oh, one of the questions was how, how do arborists prefer... I, I missed that question. Sorry. To be contacted. So... Um, I know that Courtney posted before the website, um, we can call yep. the office or what's the best way to get in touch with, with you or any of the other arborists? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, calling the office office is, uh, probably one of the best ways. Um, the website is really a good way too. Um, usually when you, um, uh, go on the website, you, uh, click, um, try to get an appointment yeah, it goes right to me. It's that, awesome. Right up, right up in my area. So we can have somebody call you within a day or two and uh, schedule an appointment for you. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much. And thank you all for tuning in. Josh will not be back with me on my next one in two weeks, but I'll be back on September 23rd as we dive deep into five landscape tips to fall into winter. I didn't want to mess that one up. Five landscape tips to fall into winter. So I'll be on with Lou Meyer, a DC area arborist, Wednesday, two weeks from today at 3 p.m. Eastern. And so Josh, I know, I don't think he needs to come back. This has been so wonderful. Thank you all so much. And Megan, I like your joke. That's good. Stop leaping us. So thank you all so much for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful day and you have a wonderful fall. Take care.